This is the Wishing You Well podcast, and I am your host, Maria Patrick. Thank you so much for joining me today for a podcast which I have entitled, You Suck, and Other Things I Say to Myself for Motivation. Now, don't worry. If you tuned in for today's dose of inspiration and positivity, don't press stop just yet. You may not associate the words, you suck, with motivation and the power of positivity, but I assure you, we'll get there. So pop in your AirPods, put your phone or tablet on speaker, and take me along with you as you do something else for yourself. We are going to talk about the you suck method of motivation. One of the things that I love to do for inspiration is to listen to commencement speeches and coaches' halftime pep talks. Whether it is someone speaking to graduates and imparting words of wisdom for the future, or a coach who is using the halftime of the game to motivate the players onto victory, commencement speeches and locker room halftime talks are chock full of inspiration, motivation, and encouragement. While I don't personally find it encouraging if someone tells me I suck, there is a college football player who finds it very motivating. His name is Riley Leonard, and he's the quarterback of the Duke University football team. Riley has been playing football since the Pee Wee days, and in high school, he was a multi-sport standout. He drew lots of attention and praise for his performance both on the football field and on the basketball court. Last season, while at Duke, Riley registered 2,900 passing yards, six interceptions, 20 touchdowns, and 699 rushing yards. He established himself as a true dual threat quarterback, and he got national recognition last year in a game against Wake Forest, where he had 391 passing yards and four touchdowns, one of which was in the last two minutes of the game. At the beginning of this season, he got a lot of press from many sports fans and analysts who were looking to him to lead Duke to another great season and possibly a bowl game victory. In this era of social media, there's a lot of hype and it's easy to get caught up in what everyone is saying and writing about you. Riley was so concerned that he would become distracted by the praise and the hype and he really wanted to do his best playing football while staying humble at the same time. So he asked his mom if she could help him to remain humble. And thus, their mother-son pregame tradition was born. Riley's mom, Heather Leonard, started texting her son before each and every game. She regularly wrote the words, Riley, you suck, love mom. And she pressed send. This tradition became so much a part of the fabric of their family and helped Riley so much that Heather had bracelets made with the words, you suck on them, and the close-up cameras caught sight of Riley wearing the bracelet during one of the Duke games. So now the word is out, and Heather Leonard, Riley's mom, was even recently invited onto ESPN's game day, where she ceremoniously presented each of the famous anchors of the show with their very own, you suck, bracelet. The beauty of this story is that every time Riley reads one of the game day you suck text messages from his mom, he smiles because he knows that behind those words is a woman who believes in him and always has, encourages him and always has, and loves him enough, always has, to give him just what he wants and needs. A gentle reminder that Riley is more than the latest game more than the passing yards and touchdowns, more than the wins and the losses. He is a hard-working 21-year-old young man, academic scholar, talented athlete who wants to work hard, do his best, and remain centered, grounded, and humble while doing so. What motivates you? Do you have someone whose texts affirm and encourage you, or do you play that role for the people in your life? Sometimes all we need is a little encouragement, a few words that remind us that someone whom we care about also cares about us and is watching us and showing us support and encouragement and motivation. It seems like we are hardwired towards the negative. 
This is evolution in action. We can trace it back to the prehistoric days when primitive man had to be able to be prepared to deal with regular threats just to survive and avoid danger. Back then, the people who were more attuned to danger and negative stimuli were able to stay alive longer. So all these years later, we are still so accustomed to hearing the negative. Have you ever asked to speak to a manager at a store or a restaurant? That person is going to approach you, your table, your party with caution because they are expecting the worst to be bombarded with complaints, criticism, and anger. It becomes such a lovely turn of events when you end up telling the manager how much you enjoyed the food that day or how great the staff treated you and how hard everyone's working and how much you appreciate it that they're delivering such great service. When I was in health coaching school, one of our guest lecturers was the championship tennis player, Venus Williams. She gave us an inspirational lecture on the secrets to success. She told us all about Debbie and how mean Debbie is. Venus said that Debbie tells her all the time how unattractive she is, how little she has accomplished, how big her love handles are. Venus said that Debbie makes her feel really bad about herself and she realizes that she was paying way too much attention listening to and believing Debbie. Are you wondering, like I was, why someone as successful and accomplished as Venus Williams would allow someone as mean as Debbie in her life? Who is Debbie? And how is someone like Venus letting her get away with all of this negativity? Well, as it turns out, Venus admitted that Debbie is the name that she gave to her inner voice and that she had spent her entire life desperately trying to silence Debbie. Wouldn't you agree that Venus listening to and believing her own negative self-talk is just as bad as allowing someone else to speak to her that way? Venus told us that her sister Serena was instrumental in helping her defeat Debbie. Serena made Venus go see a health coach, which is why Venus was invited to come talk to us aspiring health coaches at the time. She went to see a health coach so she could get help overcoming her addiction to sugar. Serena had told Venus that if she didn't get a handle on her health, that she would not have the strength to beat back her negative inner voice. Serena told Venus to stop double faulting. I'm sure it doesn't come as a surprise that Venus and Serena speak to each other in tennis analogies. Serena told Venus to visualize where she wanted to go and whom she wanted to be. Venus told us that at that time, she made the life-changing decision to become an 11. What is an 11? She said that since 11 is better than 10, it meant she was going to give her best every single time and become the very best version of herself that she could possibly be. Venus Williams, as we know, is widely regarded as one of the greatest tennis players of all time. She once ranked number one in both singles and doubles. She won seven Grand Slam single titles, five of which were at Wimbledon and two at the U.S. Open. She successfully battled against and defeated her inner Debbie, just like the many opponents she had defeated on the tennis courts around the globe. So the question is, which one are you? Are you more like a Riley Leonard where you're surrounded by so much hype that you need someone to keep you grounded and humble and tell you regularly that you suck? Or are you housing an inner Debbie inside of you? If you are regularly telling yourself that you suck, then it is time to stop feeding that inner monster. Stop giving your Debbie water and nourishment. Are you unsure if you have an inner Debbie? Well, ask yourself this. Do you ever catch yourself saying, I can't do that because I'm too old. I can't wear that. I'm too fat. If only I was, fill in the blank, then things would be better well, then you are not treating yourself the way you deserve and you are regularly feeding yourself a dose of you suck. It is time to stop feeding your inner Debbie. It's time to offer yourself some grace and forgiveness. Forgiveness for the things you've said to yourself about yourself, for the negative things that you've thought about yourself and for treating yourself as unworthy and anything less than the best you need to remind yourself that you are wonderfully and beautifully made. Today is a new day. 
If you are struggling in any way, you are not alone. We are in this together. It's time to retrain our brains to be able to curb our negative thoughts. When those negative talk starts creeping in, we need to be aware of it and replace the negative with the positive. Perhaps a personal mantra could do the trick. Have you ever seen the viral videos of those adorable toddlers looking at themselves in the mirror saying, I'm so beautiful, I'm so smart, I'm so strong. When did we lose that built-in confidence of a toddler? Should we all be wearing bracelets on our wrists like Riley Leonard to remind ourselves that we have someone cheering us on who believes in us, who loves us so much that they are willing to say, you suck just to put a smile on your face? Let's make a deal with each other right here, right now, that we are going to put 100% of our energy and resources into nourishing our inner Debbies with positivity, encouragement, motivation, confidence, support, and love. Thank you for tuning in today. I hope that you will subscribe to my podcast so you will receive future episodes And if you give me a thumbs up, I would be most grateful. You'll be helping me to spread the word and the inspiration to others. I am so very, very grateful for your time. And as always, I am wishing you well.